Okay, so we're going to go over lab seven. This is the anterior and medial thigh. Let's get started. All right, so we're just going to quickly go over the anterior thigh muscles, and there's four of them. We have two mnemonics, strip, and then the quads are royalty. So strip stands for our hip flexors, and it's important to note that these muscles do hip flexion. They also have additional function, but it's easy to remember them as hip flexors. Uh, our sartorius is the longest muscle in the uh, body, and it's the first letter of strip. Then we have our tensor fascia latte, which is T. R is for rectus femoris, which I haven't labeled with a number, um, as it is part of our quadriceps muscle. It's ahead of the quadriceps. Then we have I for iliopsoas, which is the iliacus and the psoas major, uh, which combine and, and insert in the same place. And then we have our pectineus muscle, which is really a medial thigh muscle. Okay. Then we have the quads or royalty. If you take the idea that rectus kind of sounds like king or maybe queen, um, the quadriceps is a muscle that has four heads and inserts into a common uh, tendon which attaches to the patella. Uh, the rectus femoris is the center one. It's the queen. It's also higher up in attachment on the hip than the other ones. Um, it's vassals, vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, vastus medialis, all have their origin uh, on the femur. And as we said, the rectus femoris has its origin on the hip and they all insert um, through a common tendon on the patella. Okay. If we look at the, and these are all uh, knee extensors, they're all the foreheads of the quadriceps. All right, and so if we look at the innervation of the anterior thigh muscles, it's primarily the femoral nerve. And so you can remember the F in femoral nerves stands for front, the front, the anterior portion of the thigh. Um, and so the sartorius muscle is innervated by the femoral nerve. Uh, the iliacus muscle is the femoral nerve. Then you have the psoas uh, major is actually innervated by the ventral uh, rami L1 to L3 uh, nerves. Then we have, and you can remember this as the psoas major, P is like a major pain uh, because it's not the femoral nerve, it's the ventral rami of L1 to L3. But you can also use that to remember that the insertion or the origin of the psoas major is along the uh, spine. Okay, then we have the tensor fascia latte, or other exception, which is the superior gluteal nerve. All right, so we have strip and we have the quads royalty and we have four overall anterior thigh muscles. All right, let's just take a look at them real quickly. So starting with our um, sartorius, let's see. Okay, so strip. We have our sartorius right here. Then we have our tensor fascia latte is right here. And you can see it pulls on the IT band. Okay, and then you have, so it's STR rectus femoris. And the rectus femoris is a head of the quadriceps, which we'll get to in a second. Then you have the iliacus muscle. So I'm gonna have to hide this one, see if I can get down to the iliacus muscle. All right, the iliacus uh, muscle is right there. And then you have the psoas major and the psoas minor. And then you have the pectineus, which we said is the medial, uh, it's actually a medial uh, thigh muscle. Okay, then let's just take a quick look at the quadriceps. So we said that the rectus femoris is like the queen. It inserts higher on, you can see above the hip right there. Then the other heads of the quadriceps, you have the uh, vastus lateralis right there. You have the vastus medius, and then deep to the rectus femoris, you have the fourth head, which is the vastus intermedius. All right, so not so bad. All right, so we're just going to take a quick look at the medial thigh muscles, and we have a nice mnemonic for that, which is ducks go peck. So ducks is a nice uh, three-letter word, D-U-C, for adductor, and the adductors duck behind the femur, and it goes for, from anterior hip to posterior femur. And so you can imagine, if you're going from the front of the hip to the posterior part of the femur, then when these contract or shorten, you're going to pull the thigh towards the center line of the body. And so that'd be an adduction. And so we have, just like this three-letter word, D-U-C, uh, with three adductors, we have adductor longus, adductor brevis, and adductor magnus. And so adductor mag magnus is madness, uh, because unlike the adductor longus and adductor brevis, which are both innervated by the obturator nerve, uh, the adductor magnus has two origins, two insertions, and two innervations. Okay, um, but if we think about the origins along the, the hip here, uh, the origins are on the interior part of the hip, and we think of it as a brevis sandwich with the uh, superior, um, the adductor longus is superior on the anterior hip, uh, in relation to the other two, the brevis is in the middle, and then the magnus is inferior on the hip. All right, um, and then the insertions, so we said we go from anterior hip to posterior femur, and the insertions are ducks on a line. Uh, it's the linea aspera, which goes uh, vertically down the posterior femur. Okay, so ducks go peck. That brings us to our uh, go part of the mnemonic. Go is G is for gracialis, and O is for obturator externus. The gracialis adducts the thigh um, and flexes and internally rotates the leg. Then the um, obturator externus laterally rotates the thigh, and both are innervated by the obturator nerve. 
and then pect is for pectineus, and pectineus is innervated by the femoral nerve, and we can remember this based on the fact that our previous mnemonic for the anterior thigh, anterior thigh is mostly femoral nerve, had strip, and P in strip was pectineus, and like the rest of the uh, muscles in this mnemonic, this is femoral nerve. Okay, but if you're talking about the medial thigh, uh, we're dealing with the obturator nerve, except for the adductor magnus, which has a portion which is the sciatic nerve, the hamstring portion of it. All right, let's take a quick look at what these muscles look like. All right, so starting with our um, pectineus, uh, we have, you can see that's inserting along the, uh, the origin is the superior pubic, pubic ramus, and it's inserting along the pectial line. Um, then we have our adductor brevis, our adductor longus, and then you have the adductor magnus, right? And then we have our gracialis, right? very long muscle, and our obturator externus, right? You can see it's on the anterior portion of this uh, obturator foramen, and we'll see the um, obturator internus on the other side of that foramen. All right, good job. All right, so can you summarize the regions of the low extremity? extremity? Uh, today we're looking at the anterior thigh and the medial thigh, which isn't labeled here, but we also have the posterior thigh, the gluteal region, the leg, and the foot. All of these will be on our exam. Uh, transition zones uh, connecting lower extremity with the abdominal and pelvic cavity. Well, uh, primarily we're concerned with the femoral triangle, and the femoral triangle, we use this mnemonic navel to discuss the uh, vessels inside of it and the nerve and uh, lymphatics. Then we have the popliteal fossa, which is behind the knee, and then the tarsal tunnel, um, and we'll get to that in a future lab. All right, um, the basic movements of the lower extremity at the hip joint, we have uh, a couple different ones, and they are uh, starting with flexion, right here, flexion. Then we have extension, so flexion is going uh, forward, extension going behind. Um, then we have our uh, abduction, moving away, thigh moving away. Then we have our adduction, our thigh moving towards. Okay, and then we have internal rotation. Oh, that's the wrong color. All right, internal rotation, or medial, and then external rotation. Okay. All right, and the important structures of the hip bone, uh, we have the iliac spine right here. Then we have the sciatic notch, um, the uh, acete abulum, which is where the femur articulates with the, um, the hip. And we have our obturator foramen. We have the pubis, which is right here. We have the ilium, which is this portion right here. And then we have the uh, ilia, or ilium, Ilium is, is this part. Okay, not too bad. If we look at the femur itself, we have the head of the femur, the neck, the greater trochanter, the lesser trochanter, the intertrochanteric line. We have the nutrient foramen because we'll these will show up on our x rays and it's not a fracture. Then we have the lateral epicondyle, the lateral condyle, the medial condyle, the medial epicondyle, and then the adductor tubercle where the adductors uh, insert. Okay, and then if we take a look at the different compartments of the thigh, we have the anterior compartment, the posterior compartment, which is next time, and the medial compartment. All right, the origin of the femoral artery. So if we're talking about the um, femoral artery, we're going to be talking about its branches as it innervates the thigh. Uh, primarily, we're going to be concerned with the deep femoral artery. But where does the uh, femoral artery come from? Well, if we trace it backwards, we have the external iliac artery as it passes through the ilium. Then we have the common iliac artery, and then finally the aorta, which we know leads to the heart. Okay, and what about the femoral and obturator nerves? The femoral nerve is going to, of course, we know, femoral front, the anterior portion of our thigh, and then obturator is going to be the medial portion of our thigh. And so this is the lumbar sacral plexus, um, which we can see the lumbar plexus here, and the sacral portion uh, down here. But we have the femoral nerve from the lumbar portion, um, as well as the obturator nerve from the lumbar portion of the lumbar sacral plexus. All right, and then of course from the sacral part, we have the sciatic nerve, which we'll see um, as it innervates um, the adductor magnus. The cutaneous innervation of the anterior and medial thigh is fairly straightforward, just going from uh, more superior to more inferior. We have L1, L2, L3, and then from medial to lateral, L4, L5, but you know, you can see that, you could say L4 is a little bit more uh, superior to L5. 
And then uh, we have on the lateral side, uh, S1 uh, innervating the uh, sensation on the pinky. Okay, and uh, we could break it down by the uh, different nerves. We can, I would say, thinking about the femoral nerve, the femoral nerve is doing most of the innervation of the anterior part of the thigh. Obturator is medial part. And um, so you can kind of trace that along, but I think this is a little bit easier to follow along with. All right, and so we have the great saphenous vein, which is going through this opening in the uh, fascia glotta. And it's going through the, uh, that opening is right above the femoral triangle. And the saphenous vein is how we can find the femoral triangle. So if we look at the femoral triangle, we have uh, navel, and that would be our femoral nerve, artery, vein, and then lymphatics, and this is from lateral. Uh, to medial. All right, so nerve, artery, vein, and then our lymphatics. And the saphenous vein goes into the uh, femoral vein and then goes eventually into the vena cava. Okay, and so the boundaries of the this femoral triangle, superiorly we have the uh, inguinal ligament, laterally we have the sartorius, medially we have the adductor longus, which is right here, one of our adductors. Then we have um, Along the floor, we have the pectineus and the ilio right there, and the psoas major uh, forming the floor of the femoral triangle. Okay, and then the adductor canal is going to be this uh, extension of the femoral triangle. We can see that it goes below the sartorius and um, along the um, adductors, the adductors forming the adductors forming the floor. And the adductor canal will go into, it will end at the adductor hiatus and lead to the uh, popliteal fossa uh, on the back of the knee, okay? And so if we look at the compartments of the, if we look further at the fascia of the femoral triangle, we have the femoral sheath and its compartments, and we have three with the lateral, intermediate, and medial, and the femoral nerve is outside, external to the femoral sheath, sheath. and so our lateral um, femoral sheath compartment contains our artery, intermediate, the um, vein, and then medially we have our lymphatics. Okay, and so, you know, what is a femoral hernia? Well, the femoral sheath uh, will extend into a femoral ring, uh, which will go into the abdominal cavity. And so from sheath to ring, you can have, this is a pretty weak part, um, not very strong fascia. And so intestines can go through this and then you would have a femoral hernia as you have intestines going into uh, the femoral region or the femoral triangle. All right, so if we look at the femoral artery uh, and trace its course through the thigh, we have, as we said previously, we have the aorta and then it's becoming the iliac artery, and then the femoral artery, and the femoral artery will have a number of important branches. Uh, but the most important one is the deep artery of the thigh, the deep femoral artery. And this will give rise to two main branches that we'll see in just a second, but the, they are the uh, lateral medial circumflex uh, femoral arteries, and those supply the hip joint and the neck and the head of the femur. All right, but uh, additionally, we have the superficial epigastric artery, the superficial external iliac artery, and then the superficial external pudendal artery. Okay, and then finally, we have the uh, femoral artery. As it continues down the femoral canal, it eventually becomes the popliteal artery as it goes into the popliteal fossa. All right, and so what are the two branches of the, uh, the two branches of the deep femoral artery? because uh, these have an important clinical correlation. In particular, we have the medial uh, circumflex femoral artery, and we have the lateral circumflex femoral artery. And you can see that they innervate the head and neck of the femur. And so um, the medial circumflex artery supplies the hip joint, right, hip joint, and it also supplies the uh, femoral head and neck. And then the lateral circumflex femoral is going to supply the um, hip joint, and then also extend down eventually to the uh, knee joint. Okay, and so um, if you have breaks here, you uh, might have to replace the, if you have a break here, um, you might have to, you know, replace the hip, as this is, you know, not a great uh, supplier of, of blood to this region. All right, and so what is the course of the distal part of the deep femoral artery, and what structures are supplied? Well, uh, the deep femoral artery supplies the three compartments of the, of the thigh, the anterior, medial, and posterior, as well as the hip and knee joints. Um, and so uh, you can see that the deep femoral artery uh, is going to go through the abductor magnus right here uh, to go from the anterior to posterior side. All right, and then if we look at the anterior muscles, well, we had our 
a mnemonic for that, um, which was strip. But, you know, if we start by looking at the iliosoas muscle, we know that that's made of the iliacus, or iliasis, and the psoas major. Of course, we also know that there's the psoas minor that comes along here as well. Uh, we don't consider that to be anterior thigh. Um, and so these are hip flexors. The iliacus is from the femoral nerve, and the psoas major, which we said is like a major pain for P, is from the ventral um, L1 to L2 uh, nerves. All right, and so why would movement of the thigh be hard to perform uh, with the psoas abscess? Well, these are both hip flexors, and so, you know, moving your thigh forward, remember we were looking at the uh, motion of the thigh back here. Where is it? Um, you know, if you were to uh, flex your thigh, right, move it forward, uh, you would be using your iliopsoas muscle. And so if you had an abscess there, uh, it would be really incredibly painful and uh, difficult to, to move. All right, and so uh, can you describe the attachments of the uh, innervation actions? So these are anterior thigh. So these are going to be... Um, <coughs> excuse me, um, these are going to be from the femoral nerve, and so the sartorius is right here. Uh, we can see that it attaches uh, along the uh, anterior superior uh, iliac spine, and then the uh, tensor fascia latte right here is going to also attach in that region and attach the IT tract. Then the uh, quadriceps uh, femoris, we know these are our flexors, and so our quads right here, one, two, three, and then uh, deep to the, uh, let's see, the rectus, oh my goodness, my brain has just died. Um, all right, let's go back to our muscles really quickly. So we have our, quad our rectus femoris, and then our vastus lateralis, vastus intermedius, and vastus medialis, all right? And these are knee extensors. With our um, uh, rectus femoris is our hip flexor, okay? And then the uh, testing our patellar tendon reflex, it's going to pull on the quads. And we know our quads are innervated by the femoral nerve, so it's a good test of if the femoral nerve is working well. Okay, then we have our pectineus right here, our adductor brevis, our adductor longus, and then our adductor magnus. Um, our pectineus is, we remember from the strip mnemonic, um, it is a hip flexor, and it's going to be innervated by the femoral nerve, and then the adductors are going to be the obturator nerve, with the exception that the magnus is a bit of a mess because it's the obturator nerve, and then it's also the sciatic nerve, right? But the adductors are going to adduct the leg, which is going to bring it inwards towards the midline. All right, so that's what we just said here. We also have the um, obturator externus, which is going to be innervated by the obturator nerve. Um, so yeah, these are obturator nerves as well, are innervated by the obturator nerve. And then the relationship of the adductor magnus to the femoral uh, vessels, well, um, you know, this is also going to form the bottom of our femoral canal, but we have our uh, perforations in the adductor magnus to allow our deep femoral artery to pass through uh, to get to the posterior thigh. Okay, and so medial thigh compartments, um, if we're looking at the gracialis, which is right here, uh, it's a long graceful muscle that attaches to the pes and serenus on the tibia. Um, it's an adductor, meaning the contraction will you know, bring it in towards the midline. Um, but based on this, uh, it can also medially rotate the, the leg. Okay. And then in addition, we also have the semi-tendinous uh, muscle is going to attach um, with the gracialis. And because it's a very weak adductor, occasionally it's used to, um, it's removed and used to replace a hand muscle. All right. So if we talk about the femoral nerve, the femoral nerve has an anterior branch, a posterior branch, and um, it will give rise to the saphenous nerve as well. Uh, we remember that the femoral, F and femoral, is for front, and those are our uh, knee extensors in the front, the anterior part of the, um, the anterior part of the thigh. All right, our quads in particular, and uh, then we also have our uh, hip flexors, so knee extensors and hip flexors. All right, and then the obturator nerve is going to be for our medial uh, portion of the thigh, and those are the adductors, and so um, the obturator nerve. If you were to hurt that, you'd have a hard time uh, moving your leg in. All right, and that's it. Let's take a quick look at the case report for this particular lab, and then we'll be done. Okay, this is the surgical scenario lab, for, uh, scenario for lab seven. Let's just take a quick look. And so this is George, a 65-year-old male with past history of hypertension, hypercalocholesterolemia, uh, and difficulty healing lower extremity wounds due to peripheral vascular disease. He presented to his PCP last week with complaints of progressive pain in his legs at rest. Uh, he has smoked one pack of cigarettes per day for the last 35 years. His PCP referred him to a vascular surgeon to be evaluated for surgical intervention as previous behavioral and medical management has not been successful. On exam, the pulses in his ankle and foot regions are decreased 
at um, one plus and uh, femoral pulse is bilater normal at two plus bilaterally. And George's ankle brachial index is 0 0.5, which indicates the moderate peripheral, which indicates moderate peripheral vascular disease. The vascular surgeon is considering recommending George for a balloon angiopathy plasty to improve blood flow to his lower extremity and decrease his symptoms of peripheral vascular disease. All right, so this is just a lot of information we don't really need. Uh, let's just look at the pictures. So what vessels appear to be occluded? All right, well, so we compare this part to this part, and that would appear to be the superficial uh, femoral artery, right? Um, so the femoral artery comes down and then eventually becomes the popliteal artery. The short arrow would be the popliteal artery, and again, we can compare it. I sort of drew over it, but compare uh, this side right here to this side, and you can see that, you know, it's not quite as defined. Um, and so occlusion would mean that, you know, our blood is not flowing through it, right? So the left popliteal artery is what we have here. And then, um, you know, these, okay, so this is a magnification of the uh, sections right there. So we have the superficial femoral, we're not seeing showing up, so there must be some kind of uh, blockage or occlusion. And then same thing down here for the uh, left uh, popliteal artery. And so what would you expect uh, to have decreased blood flow due to uh, uh, atherosclerosis, which is basically just plaque buildup uh, in the blood vessels? And that would be basically anything that is uh, inferior, inferior towards the feet. Um, and so our dorsalis pedis, our uh, popliteal, and any distal uh, femoral arteries based on, you know, what's going on here. Anything distal to that is going to have reduced blood flow. All right, that's it, and good job.